today we are going to give you an example of some ultra rapid prototyping things you can do at home to make something you need very very quickly we're talking less than an hour from conception to finished product so stay tuned for that as we explore tinkercad simplify 3d and the jg maker artist d to accomplish this welcome to today's 3d print So as you know, I have my new lab studio area set up. I have my original stainless steel table, no, well, semi stainless steel, I think it's just steel, whatever. It's magnetic, so it's not pure, it's not high grade stainless steel. From home in Pennsylvania, I brought it to my new home here in New Mexico. And while here in New Mexico, I got another stainless steel table, which is awesome. This is an eight footer. So instead of having four legs, this has six legs. <laughs> Um, I am doing this after the fact because I made that entire first video. I spent the last, you know, hour and a half making the video and, um, yeah, I forgot to plug in the microphone. So there's no audio for the whole thing. <laughs> so here we are doing it again. So anyway, I needed little, the six legs on this table, the end four legs have the little plastic feet that go on the table, keeps the metal tubes from tearing up your floor. While the center two are missing those feet. So the center of the table does a, a real bouncy bouncy when you um you, you lean on it, put stuff on it, etc. So I'm going to fix that today by printing these. Just simple little feet. These are real sloppy because I over extruded way too much. I did a 1.75 millimeter extrusion of a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Eh, it don't work very well. 1.4, maybe 1.5 is about the best you're going to get and still have a clean finish. Um, 1.25 to 1.3 will work very well uh, on most printers. Depends on whether your nozzle has a point or if it has a flat tip. If it has a flat tip, you can get away with a little more because that flat tip will make that flat surface for you. While the super pointy pointy like these have are a little more limited on how um, how much you can exaggerate your nozzle size. <laughs> so that's why I like printers with very large nozzles. So we are going to start in Tinkercad. Here we go. We start in Tinkercad and we just make this. We make this an itty bitty little thing you see here. All this is a paraboloid. So over here on the right, we're going to just select paraboloid. And then what I did is I cut the, I made it about the size I wanted. I used cut boxes to cut the top and bottom off. I needed it to be about 60 by 60 by 50. And then I cut off that little top there. We'll get to why I cut off that top in a minute. Um, you could do other shapes, half spheres, spheres to make an egg shape. You start off with a cylinder. Uh, for example, if you want it to go really fancy and you want it to make a really nice foot for it, like that actually fit, you'd take your calipers, you'd measure the leg. You could, for example, do something like this, have a cylinder, and then you could put a work plane on top of that cylinder. But first, let's make that cylinder have more sides so it's not so nasty. Then we could take a sphere, put that on top of there, and we can align those. I'm showing you how I would make something a little more fancy. We're not going to do it. We don't need it to be fancy, but this is just how you would do it. Align the parts. Um, let's see. Let's make that a little shorter. We don't need that to be so tall. Okay. Join those parts, and then we're going to give it a flat bottom. So that it'll sit more evenly. So just encompass that, raise it up. Boom. That'll be more than good enough. Join them together. Flip this over 180 degrees. Put a work plane on top. Grab our paraboloid. Put that on top. Align these parts again. Join them, do another cut block, since we can still make this a vase mode compatible. And then nip off the top like that, join. And there you go, there's a more advanced version of this foot. Um, what did I make this, 60 by 50? So let's increase the size of it until it is 50 tall. 40, 50, there we go. So that'll be about the same size and we could drop that 
down to the zero plane. And there's a fancier version of this foot. So you have a little bit of a rounded bottom and a cylinder side. And then this part is a part that will insert into the bottom of the, um, the table itself. Simple version, fancy version. You can do either one. I'm, I'll probably try printing this just to see what it looks like. But we'll do that later. Then we bring it into the slicer. This is going to be my final slice. So there's our part. I, I sliced the part off. This is before I sliced it off in Tinkercad. You can also do that in Simplify 3D. So what I do is I go to Tools, Variable Settings, and I find the point that I want to slice it off. 47 millimeters, that looks fine. And then in my profile here, in fact, let me change this back down to 1.5. Since I think 1.75 is a bit too much. Uh, advance, stop printing at 47. Now, in order to extrude this much plastic, I have some specific settings I'm using. So 1.0 multiplier, 0.4 nozzle, 1.5 extrusion width. I'm telling it to extrude at 1.5. So it'll extrude enough plastic to equal a 1.5 wall, which is um, more than 300% of what the nozzle is sized at. So do expect slightly sloppy prints if you don't put a larger nozzle on your printer. I'm doing a 0.4 millimeter layer height. Layer height is what is going to dramatically increase your print speed. So this will be single wall, so zero top, zero bottom, single wall, a single outline corkscrew vase mode. These settings all don't matter. But increase to 0.4, I could probably get away with 0.6. Uh, that might actually work, but um, 0.4 was more reliable when you're dealing with a small nozzle. If I had a 0.8 or a 1.0 millimeter nozzle in here, I would probably go with 0.6 because that would again increase my speed. Now here's the other part, under speeds, I'm going to be going at 20 millimeters per second. Because if you go too fast, your hot end won't be able to keep up. Because you're going to need to really make that plastic hot. So I'm running at 230 on both. That's important because you're extruding, um, let's see, three and a half times, seven times the amount of plastic per millimeter. So you need seven times the heat. So you really need to crank up the nozzle temperature in order to make sure it comes out hot enough. I also lowered the cooling fan speed a little bit just to make sure that I, the layers will be hot enough to stick to each other properly. And I believe that is it in here. With this printer, you don't have to change anything. Oh, here, I stopped printing at 47 if you do the you know, cutoff manually. So we go and slice this. And it should be about 18 minutes. Yep, 18 minutes. So it'll probably take about 20. So there is the print. So you don't want to, why is the print all the way on the left-hand side of the bed and not in the center? Well, that's because the JG Maker Artist D is an IDEX printer. That means it has two print heads, as you can see here. There we go. You see those two print heads spaced apart there. And it has the ability to do mirror and duplication modes. What that means is like I'm, I'm going to be using duplication mode. And that will allow me to tell the printer to print two copies of the model. And by printing two copies of the model with both heads simultaneously, I literally double my print speed. I'm printing at the same speed, but I'm printing two at once. So you get two for one. And two for one means you're effectively printing at double the speed. Because on your, like, for example, in Ender 3, you would have to print one and then start it over and print two. Well, I'm printing one print job that takes the exact same amount of time, but because I have two independent heads, it's printing two of them simultaneously. Now, that requires that you make sure you don't go past the halfway point. So here's the halfway point on my bed right here in the middle. So I have to make sure this model only exists on this half of the print bed so that it um, the heads will not touch. You don't have to worry about that, but the heads, you have to make sure they don't go off the print volume or this head crash into this model. And to avoid that, you need to make sure you're only using half the print bed. So I slid the model over onto the left-hand side. Now, because I'm using duplication mode, I don't have to worry about the physical dimensions of the actual print head unit, the actual um, the print carriage, the, the module on the end, because the parts are going to be moving like this. So they'll never touch each other. They'll not, I'll never have to worry about them touching each other. So you can use the full 155 millimeter width. You have to get 310 millimeter total on the um, x-axis. 
which means I can use the full 155 millimeters. Don't forget about the space that your skirt or brim consumes. You have to factor that in as well. So keep it at like 145. And as long as you position it correctly, you can do duplication mode or mirror mode and print two simultaneously. You can also combine this with Simplify 3D's um, sequential printing mode. So for example, actually let's set it up just for the heck of it. Let's save this. This is going to be called Lake Support 2. Now let's call this Lake Support Fancy. So I think I already have a 2. Leg support fancy. We're going to export as an STL. Save it. Open containing folder. Drop that into Simplify 3D. So there's the fancy one. Uh, that's actually not big enough. So I am going to have to scale that. Yeah, that's not big enough. We're going to turn off uniform scaling and we're going to make it 60 by 60 since I already know I need it to be 60 by 60. And that still looks vase mode printable. We should be okay. It does look like it's the proper height, so it should be okay. Now I'm going to take this one and move it up here, and this one, and move it back here, far enough apart that the print head won't impact the print itself. And then I'm going to duplicate this process so it's the exact same process, except now it's going to print just the second model. And this one is just going to print the first model. And then I'll print both sequentially, max out your print volume. So now what it's going to do is print this one first and that one second. See? So it's going to print that one. Then it's going to move back there, go down and print that one. And because I'll have the printer in duplication mode, the other print head on the IDEX printer will be printing a duplicate of those on the right. Really freaking cool. And I'm going to show you that in just a moment. Let me save this out. Uh, the only question I have is whether or not this will support, but I think it will. I think there's enough um, strength there with a 1.5 millimeter extrusion to handle that. And it'll look nice. So save as we are going to call it leg support. So it's the same file we already used. There we go. Now we are going to switch over to the printer and I want to show you how to set that up. So we will switch to this camera view here. Turn the printer on. Put in the SD card. And let me show you the screen. Come on, there we go. And of course, I have some nasty, nasty glare. There we go. So here's our screen. Now, on this printer, the IDEX is handled internally. So you don't have to, huh, figure yourself out. There we go. It, it keeps getting, almost getting it, almost. So you go into configuration, you go into IDEX mode. And we're going to select duplication. It is then going to align the two print heads for duplication mode. There you go. The two heads are now aligned for IDEX mode duplication. How cool is that? Then we simply tell it to print our model. Now, something else I love with this printer, more printers should do this. This screen tends to lag the processor these things use. I don't know why it won't focus on that. I can see it focus, then it loses the focus immediately. There's no way there it goes. Hey, it locked that time. So, so you, you know sometimes that you'll select something and it'll actually jump to a different part of the screen. Well, this one here, 
brings up a start print with the file name. So you know you actually have the correct file name and then you select print. Even though it's one extra step, it's better than you know waiting 10 minutes to find out, oops, that's not the model you wanted to print and you have to cancel and start all over. So I like that little confirmation screen. So I'm going to pause this for now and I'll come back once everything has heated up. And here we have the beginning of the process. So it's going to bring the right head over and then move both heads together, which is a pretty darn neat process. And then you can see, beginning to extrude the plastic. And it's just going to print both of them simultaneously. That is just a really, really slick mode, especially if you've got to print a bunch of the same thing. Now it's printing the actual part after printing the skirt. I lowered the extrusion down to 1.5 millimeters, so this should be a bit cleaner than the really sloppy print I got right here. That's just because I was extruding too much plastic. So every now and then the plastic would just bulge out. I mean, it works. I mean, it's a, it's a part that you can't really see. It's, it's just that little leg right there. So I don't really care, but if I can make it nicer, why not? I don't know what that pause was. Oh, we're in base mode. It's the bottom layer. That's it. I will come back when it's ready to switch to the second set of parts in the back. So that'll confirm that sequential mode works with IDEX duplication mode, which it should. The printer doesn't really care. So I turned it down to 85% extrusion and that started to get pretty smooth. So I think that'll work well. And as you can see, it successfully switched to the second part of the um, sequential print. And now it's printing the second pair. That is awesome. There you go. There's the two fancy ones I printed. They're a little sloppy because obviously I'm using a 0.4 nozzle to print over one millimeter. <laughs> but if you want speed, that's the way you need it. Now, it'll take a little bit longer, but you could also use my little trick for um, doing double wall base mode to create a two wall base print. So if you need something a little bit stronger than this, you can do that as well. That would allow you to bump the extrusion down to like one millimeter, which would be a little bit better out of that nozzle and then do your double wall base or just, you know, these are most likely strong enough. You have, if I had to do all six feet for the table, I would make these a little stronger. But since I have the four feet on the ends and I just need to do center feet, more than strong enough. I've already got one installed, put the other one in, and my table won't be so bouncy. If you have any questions, ask down below. I will see you guys this coming Wednesday when we work on the Kaiwu Kickstarter printer.